Welcome to online worship service at Grace First Presbyterian Church on this Sunday, July 19, 2020. As people of grace, we gather together, not physically, but in one heart and mind, to worship God who loves us and calls us to worship. Though we can't wait to worship together, we know that for now that this is the best way. We had a target date for August 16 as our reopening in-person worship service, but the session has made the decision to postpone until further notice. And we will keep you all posted uh, about those details. Today, we welcome to our virtual pulpit, Denise Diab, who will be delivering God's word to us entitled, Search Me, Know Me, Lead Me. Denise is a member of Grace First here. She graduated from San Francisco Theological Seminary in 2019 and is a candidate of, at our Los Ranchos Presbytery to become ordained as the Minister of Word and Sacrament. Let us be called to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for God is good. Lord, we worship you because you are ever faithful to us. Lord, we praise you because you know us and we matter to you. Lord, we give thanks to you because you are our God. We worship you, we praise you, we thank you. Let us make a joyful noise and sing God's praises forever. Let us worship together. Let us join together in our prayer of confession as we pray together in one voice. Loving and merciful God, we are grateful that you are always with us. You know our thoughts and the words on our tongues before we utter a word. We know that you are righteous and just God. We confess that we are struggling with so many issues that cover our communities and our world in darkness, poverty, racism, sexism, homophobia, xenophobia, misogyny, violence, greed, and unethical behavior. Lord, sometimes we feel as though we hardly know where to begin, but we know that your light can banish the darkness. 
Lord, we know that you are able to do more than we can ask or imagine. So we begin by asking you to search our hearts. Help us to see any wicked ways that are in us. With your guidance and through the power of the Holy Spirit, may we correct our sinful ways so that we do your will. Help us to examine our actions, thoughts, and words daily so all that we do leads a world of love, kindness, and justice. We ask your forgiveness for all the places we have strayed from your way. Forgive us, make us new, make us whole. These and other blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear now these words of assurance of pardon. Friends, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. We need not fear God's judgment, but rather rejoice in the Lord's saving grace that frees us and transforms us. Believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Our scripture reading comes from Psalm 139, verses 1 through 12, and verses 23 to 24 from the New Revised Standard Version. Hear these words. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed and show, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. 
If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for the darkness is as light to you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God. Good morning or afternoon, whatever time it is that you're visiting, uh, viewing this in order to participate in worship today. I'm very, very delighted to be with you today. I want to thank Pastor Marion for inviting me. I want to thank um, Pastor Jonas for all of his encouragement and support. I'm just glad to be back in Southern California with you. I had looked forward to us getting together in person, but I'm really grateful for the technology that allows us to get together uh, virtually in order to still be in community. So uh, this has gotten to be kind of the new normal for me, I'm, I'm, but I'm enjoying it. I'm just so grateful, so grateful that it allows us to continue to be in community and for all of us to express the warmth that I have always known to be grace first. And I especially wanna thank Pastor Marion, Pastor Jonas, Stan, Chris, all of the staff for all that they've done in order to create that. I mean, it's been a lot of extra work, I think, um, but, 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 but they have just, um, they've just done a wonderful job with everything, so thank you. Please be in prayer with me. Gracious God, we come to you this day, grateful for the opportunity to come and worship together, together virtually. Lord, we come knowing that there is a lot going on in the world, that people are feeling anxious, and even some of us are having anxieties. But we pray that you calm our spirits and that you be with um, all those issues that are out there and help us to do what we can to make this the kind of world that you have uh, planned for us to be in. And so now as we turn to your word, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. May these your gathered people see more of you and less of me. These and other blessings I ask in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the 139th Psalm. It is oftentimes called the search me O oh God, Psalm. Some scholars attribute it to David, others to David's son. We are really not sure who wrote it. It could have even been a woman. So let me clarify that when using a pronoun to refer to the writer, I will use the combined pronoun he or she. I have titled today's sermon, Search Me, Know Me, Lead Me. Search me, know me, lead me. I have shared before that when I walked El Camino de Santiago, the 23rd Psalm was the prayer that carried me. On my first day of the pilgrimage, I walked five miles. On the second day, as I put on my backpack and was ready to head out, I felt this sudden rush of anxiety. All I could think was, what have I gotten myself into? I have 495 miles to go. And then a calm came over me as the words, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, came to mind. And then I was off, confident and assured by a prayer that I learned as a child. Theologian Walter Brueggemann would suggest that my ability to go from anxiety to calmness, fearfulness to assurance, was because the 23rd Psalm was a reminder 
that tapped into my personal faith beliefs. It tapped into my experiences of God as reliable and trustworthy. So in the face of whatever I might encounter over the next 495 miles of my journey in that moment, and for many other moments, the 23rd Psalm reminded me that God had me covered. At first glance, Psalm 139 also appears to be a song of assurance and confidence. Initially, the psalmist affirms that they are fully known by God. The writer goes on to point to paint a vivid picture of being completely inseparable from God. However, the concluding two verses raise questions about what is really known about the psalmist's relationship with God. The questions are not about what God knows, nor are the questions about what the psalmist knows about God. Rather, the questions are about what the psalmist knows about himself or herself. For the next few minutes, we'll explore that issue along with other insights that Psalms 139 has for us regarding our own faith journeys. The first insight is you matter to God because God knows you and God is reliable and trustworthy. You matter to God because God knows you and God is reliable and trustworthy. The writer begins the psalm by declaring, Oh Lord, you have searched me and have known me. In this brief declaration, the writer provides some important information. First, the writer's salutation to God makes us aware that the writer is in a covenant relationship. The English word Lord is the translation of the Hebrew word Yahweh. Yahweh is the Israelite covenant name for God. It is the name God told Moses when Moses asked God's name. As a member of the covenant people, the psalmist has a special relationship with God. The Israelite covenant with God was an exclusive relationship that was binding on both sides. Yahweh would be their God, and for their part, the Israelites were expected to worship Yahweh exclusively, and they were expected to obey Yahweh's instructions. Secondly, the Hebrew verb for know appears in the imperfect tense. The imperfect describes an action that was completed in the past and continues over time. In other words, God's knowing is not just a one-time event, but rather a continuous action into the future. In the subsequent verses, the psalmist goes on to describe in detail the things that God knows about her or him. The things the writer describes appear to be ordinary daily life activities. However, on closer inspection, we see that they are closely related to the instructions God gave the Israelites as part of the covenant. God knows the writers sitting and rising. This is important because the covenant people were warned against walking in the counsel of the ungodly or standing in the way of sinners or sitting in the seat of the scornful. In other words, there is joy for those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with those who mock God. God knows the writer's thoughts. The Hebrew word is translated as thoughts, but in Hebrew, it also means purpose or aim. The aim of those in covenant with Yahweh is to love God and love neighbor. God knows the ways, the paths available to the psalmist. God is not merely acquainted with each option, but also carefully measures and evaluates each course of action. As part of the covenant relationship, one's course of action needs to include consideration for widows, orphans, strangers, and the poor. God knows every word on the writer's tongue, even before they speak. The ninth commandment stresses the importance of speaking truthfully. God knows the writer 
intimately. God also cares about what the writer does because God wants to remain in relationship with the writer. We know this because verse five tells us that God does two things. One, God hymns the psalmist in. The term to hem in refers to a common military strategy, which means to surround one's enemies. Thus, in this case, God uses God's power to protect the psalmist. Two, God lays God's hand on the writer, a physical indication of God's approval. Up to this point, we see how the writer makes the case for how he or she is known by God. What is not so obvious is what the writer knows about God. We must draw our own conclusions by reading between the lines. As a child of the covenant through Abraham, the writer knows that God has charged the Israelites to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice. The prophet Micah reiterated what was required, to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. As a member of the covenant community, the writer also knows God is ever faithful to keep God's promises. God delivered the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. God has proven to be reliable and trustworthy. You matter to God because God knows you. You matter to God because God knows you and God is reliable and trustworthy. So honor your sacred relationship with God by being moral and just in your actions, in your thoughts, and in your words. Secondly, God is always present. God is always present. In verses 12, 7 through 12, the psalmist explores several hypothetical scenarios that might separate her or him from God's presence. The writer concludes that even Shoal, the place of the dead, could not separate him or her from God's presence. The New Cambridge Bible Commentary suggests that the writer's assertion of God's presence in Shoal is unexpected. Most psalms portray soul as a place of divine absence. In verse 10, the writer speaks of God's leading and holding. The original Hebrew has some nuances that are not apparent in the English translation. The Hebrew verb lead is conjugated such that it is clear that God is actively causing the writer to go in a specific direction. In addition, the Hebrew word translated as whole has the nuance of grasping. Grasping is a word that indicates action and agency on the one holding. So imagine God grasping the psalmist's hand to lead the writer on the path of blessings. Finally, regarding God's presence, the writer reflects on being covered by God, covered by darkness. Yet this is not a problem because the darkness does not overcome God's light. In Psalm 139, the psalmist celebrates a world where he or she is fully known by a reliable and trustworthy God who is present in every situation to not only protect, but to also lead the psalmist on a path full of blessings. However, Brueggemann suggests that if we examine the psalmist's assertions with an eye open to the world around us, we see not that everyone experiences life as the psalmist describes it. Brueggemann writes, life is well-oriented only for some, and that is characteristically at the expense of others. In the Psalms, we enter into the religious sensitivity and life experience of those who know life to have congruity, symmetry, and proportion. This means they have ended up with the best land and so do not find it difficult to live a life of gratitude. I would also add, not only do they end up with the best land, they also end up with the right neighborhoods, the right schools, access to healthcare, wealth, etc. We know persons and communities whose experience of injustice 
and disorder deeply contradicts this faith-filled life described in the song. We must be vigilant not to get caught on the slippery slope that allows our faith testimonies and traditions to comfortably morph into self-congratulatory social conservatism. Social conservatism that gloats in having a life that is blessed and highly favored. Still worse, we must be vigilant to not label anyone we deem as other as outside God's knowing and presence. News headlines for the past few weeks scream in attention-getting font sizes regarding the lack of righteousness and justice across our nation. In defense of the poor, the indigenous nations, the blacks, the browns, the Asians, the LGBTQAI community, the old and the young, God is saying, you are wrong about me. God is saying, my plan for righteousness and justice is for all creation. God is always present. So if God appears to be absent, do something about the systems and policies that subvert God's plans for righteousness and justice. Lastly, establishing a righteous and just community is everyone's responsibility. Establishing a righteous and just community is everyone's responsibility. This week I saw a cartoon that caused me to think about the writer's final verses of the song. There's a doctor in an examination room with a patient. They are both looking at an x-ray uh, image on the wall. The doctor is pointing to something on the x-ray. The caption reads, See this right here, that's the racist bone in your body. Now maybe life would be a lot different if we could identify defective character traits with an x-ray. My guess is people would require a lot of second opinions. The concluding verses of the Psalm take an unexpected turn. At the beginning of the Psalm, the writer appears confident in God's searching and knowing. At the end, the writer asks to be searched again as if to make sure God didn't miss something. Maybe God should do a CT scan or an MRI this time. Unlike verse one where the Hebrew verb search was in the perfect tense indicating completed action, in verse 23, it is in the imperfect, now indicating that the action will continue into the future. The writer also makes additional requests. The writer asks God to know their heart, their inner person. The writer asks God to know their anxious thoughts and doubts. So again, the Hebrew word that is often translated as thoughts in English is actually a different word than what we saw earlier and is more specific than plain thoughts. The writer now alludes to disquieting thoughts, anxieties, doubts, secrets. The writer asks God to see if there is any wicked way in him or her. I see this as the writer's pause for self-reflection and evaluation. Finally, unlike in verse 10, where, the, where God leads the writer on the path of blessings, in the last verse of the Psalms, the writer concludes the Psalm by asking God to lead him or her on the path of righteousness a life of moral and ethical behavior. See if there is any wicked way in me, in my actions, in my thoughts, in my words. As monuments to white supremacy are being removed, one wonders how anyone ever thought that Confederate monuments, memorials, and flags could ever lead to unity and promote the general welfare of our country. Lord, see if there is any wicked way in me. After 48 years of protests, 48 years, almost half a century, the Washington DC NFL football team has decided to replace the name that members of the indigenous nations considered a derogatory racial epithet. Lord, see if there is any wicked way in me. 
This week, the resident at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue commuted the sentence of his convicted crony, Roger Stone, who is known to be said, what is right is whatever you can get away with. Lord, see if there is any wicked way in me. And last month, the 224th General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church USA declared, the church must be the first place seeking racial justice and reconciliation, the dismantling of structural racism and the healing of our marginalized communities. It has unfortunately not often been so. Lord, see if there is any wicked way in me. Beloved, we are at a major crossroads in America. Is there any wicked way in me? in my home, in my community, in my church. Establish a righteous, establishing a righteous and just humanity is everyone's responsibility. So examine your heart daily and eliminate any wicked ways. God does not require that faith be based on a pablum Everything is all right with the world, acceptance of scripture. The Psalms offer us a taste of life in all its verities, the heaven highs and the shoal lows. Each Psalm was written describing a particular context and the unique circumstances the writer chose to convey. On a spiritual level, the Psalms offer us the writer's personal truths that may also provide insights for us to better understand God, our world, and ourselves. Brueggemann reminds us that ultimately our spirituality must answer to God, to the God who is present where the questions of justice and order are paramount. As you reflect on Psalms 139, remember you matter to God and God is reliable. So honor your sacred relationship with God by being moral and just in all your actions, all your thoughts, and all your words. God is always present. So if God appears to be absent, do something about the systems and policies that subvert God's plans for righteousness and justice. And lastly, establishing a righteous and just humanity is everyone's responsibility. So examine your heart daily and eliminate any wicked ways. Beloved, may it be so for you and for me. Amen.
I love it. You are the salt of the earth. You are God's beloved children. Know that you matter to God and God is reliable and trustworthy. So honor your sacred relationship with God by being moral and just in all of your actions, all of your thoughts and all of your words. Know that God is present always with you. So if God appears absent, do something about the systems and policies that subvert God's plans for righteousness and justice. And establishing a righteous and just humanity is everyone's responsibility. So examine your heart daily and eliminate any wicked ways. So as you go, may the grace and love of God, may the peace and love of Christ, and may the power and guidance of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever until we meet again. Amen.